All right, guys, we are back after the restart of the computer. Hopefully that fixes the disconnects. I don't know what was going on with my stream, but it was just cutting in and out. I, I double-checked the Internet. The Internet's not having any issues. Maybe it's because I decided to start using the 32-bit version of OBS instead of the 64-bit version. Uh, I've been using 64 for a long time, and I was experimenting with 32 to see if it uses less resources. And that might be why, but it also might not be why, so, so we'll see. Might have been the fact that I just needed to restart the computer. Because <laughs> it's been on a few hours. feel like I'm making pretty good progress with these guys because not all of them are going to have these uh, tunics and I've already painted a bunch of guys with tunics so and I say tunics when I mean Zeltbon camouflage the uh, poncho or the shelter quarters Good. Yeah, if you're just now joining us because you just saw me start streaming, um, I'm in the middle of painting some Warlord Games 28mm German Panzer Grenadiers. Or just Grenadiers, and just late war Grenadiers. They could be Panzer Grenadiers, or they could be non, they could be whatever. Uh, we're to the point where I'm painting the base coat on the ponchos, so that... Uh, once I get all the base coats of everything that's supposed to be camouflaged, we'll be able to move on to the next step. And uh, pretty soon, we're almost to the point where I'm going to need to dip these using uh, a polyurethane stain. And then that will be the end of the evening because that takes like all night to dry. Uh, there are three colors going on to this, well, actually probably more, but there's three primary colors that go on to this camouflage. It's a brown, a green, and this khaki. Uh, I'm only doing the base coat khaki and then doing the dip, and then once the dip dries, come back later with the other two camouflage colors. I'm not reading chat, uh, except in between colors, so I apologize for that. This is a long process. I have not sped up the video or, uh, whoops, I know, I think I missed the, yep, I did, the gears. I'm not speeding up the video and I'm not editing out any content that you might see on a YouTube video that someone uploads a tutorial on how to paint a certain type of miniature. I'm not doing that. This is not a tutorial. This is not a edited down version of this. I, the, part of this 
one of the reasons why I'm live streaming every single freaking minute is because I want to know how many days and how many hours it took me to paint these models. Why? Because I, I need to know how much to charge for labor. Ooh, my stomach just growled. Just said, hello, you're hungry. Dang, how many more of those guys I got left? I got four of them. Five of them. Okay. Well, five ain't too bad, actually. Now, I was telling my audience that if you're here to see me dip, go ahead and come back in about 15 minutes. Uh, you don't have to hang around. If you want to hang around and chat and watch and get some cool ideas please do but if you're here to see me dip come back in about 30 minutes because I still have a couple more colors to do before I dip they're minor but I still have to do them I'm not sure what color I want to do the spare barrel case for the machine gun. I might have to look that up to see what color it's supposed to be. That's the one thing on this uniform that I'm not sure what color it's supposed to be. I bet you it doesn't matter. I bet you I could color it freaking leave it black or color it any color, It'd probably be okay. When in doubt, leave it black. But I will do some research before I get to that. <sighs> you know? Oh, gators. I was like, I'm missing something. What am I missing? The old gate meisters. Wow, I'm flying through these guys because they don't have a whole lot of the khaki. They just got a couple of gators and that's it.
I was thinking that I was going to finish my Bolt Action Boot Camp series tonight, but I don't think I'm going to have time. I can always do it tomorrow night. It's only a couple more videos, and they, they don't take that long to film. They take quite a bit of time to edit, but they don't take any time to film, so... Okay, we're closing in on the end. It looks like it's... We're getting close. Is that helmet camouflaged? I guess it is. Dang, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to get something to eat. Crackers or something. My stomach is interfering with my ability to paint effectively. No, I don't know. You know, I paint these models and then I say... Let's go play. And then somebody says, no, I don't want to play. So it's like I wasted my time painting these guys. <laughs> so better play. Damn it. We better use these models on the table. Nah, I don't know. I was thinking, and you could tell me if you think this is a reasonable amount, but I was thinking, about once they, once, no, they're not done yet, but I was thinking about 60 bucks a squad. I mean, it's taken, it's going to, when it's all said and done, it's going to have taken me six days. Each day would have been about two hours. So I'm thinking, okay, so that's about 12 hours of labor. So if I charged like a $10 an hour, which is kind of low for a professional painter, but if I did, that'd be 120 bucks, man, just for labor. So I said, hey, maybe if I just half that. And then I thought about it. Well, I'm doing 30 models, so all that time is not on those 10 models that I'm selling. It's only one-third of the time, right? So instead, if I go full dollar amount, What's one third of 120? Well, forty. Hey, <laughs> so there's forty, and then the cost of the models. So, 50, maybe 50. Yeah, I can see 50 being probably a reasonable amount. Oh, materials. Yeah, didn't even talk about materials. So, that's why I was saying 60. Yeah, I think 60 would be a good, because I'm gluing it. I'm painting it. I'm flocking it. I'm gridding it. So it's not just labor, it's materials as well. So yeah, so I think $60 would be a good fair amount um, for a 10-man squad. Now some people would say, well, damn, that's $6 a model pretty high well it's not high for a fully painted model fully assembled model 
it would be high for a bare bones, unassembled, unpainted. Yeah. I agree with that. Once you assemble them, the price goes up. Once you paint them, the price goes up. And then, if you're a good painter, like I think I am, then the price should go up again. But I'm only charging like $5.00. Actually, no, I'm charging more than $5. I'm charging $10 an hour. Plus materials. Some of these riflemen, all they've got is a helmet cover and others have helmet covers and ponchos that rolled up on their back. I haven't played Star Citizen in a hot minute. Probably a month. I love that game, but I need to word it in a way where it's I love the idea of what that game will be. Let me rephrase it like that. Because it's not like that yet. And I can't wait for it to become what I what I want it to become. Okay, this guy's got a camel cover on his gas mask. I so want to go to a bolt action tournament. So bad.
so bad to the point where I might actually run one. Uh, there's a couple of conventions that happen in my local area. NashCon happens down in Nashville. That's a big one for me. It's all historical miniatures, so it it's not all 100% historical, but 90% of it is. Um, I don't know if they play bold action there. I don't know. They play a lot of ancients. But people like me bring in World War II. And Napoleonics. Basically guns. Yep, so once I get my American paratroopers in and I put all them together, we can have a 28 millimeter battle. We don't need buildings or anything, but that can all come later. Plus I'm gonna scratch build some, so you know how you know how I do. Okay. There's only four left. Right. Yep. Okay, let's knock these guys out. Yeah, I talked a couple of videos back on how I repaired the arm joints with the putty and the super glue mixture. And uh, now that I'm painting the models, I don't see any gaps or lines where I had done any repairs. So it's like... 100% fixed. Okay. Fixed, bitch. Yeah, it's... Basically, I took care of the models, and as I'm painting and stuff like that, nothing's showing up, so that means I must have done a good job. Or I'm blind. It's probably the latter. Gators. I keep forgetting those until the last second. I get ready to put it down and I'm like, why are these areas right above the boots brown? Or black, I mean. It's because I didn't paint them. It's after 3 a.m. It's all right. I want to make sure this gets done. And I got you on camera so you can see everything 
later I can go back and watch this. I can critique myself. Say, why did I say that? And why did I do it that way? Why did I... I got a new technique, you know. Like, I've gone back and watched my uh, painting of my Panzer... Panzer Grenadiers. My British Grenadiers from the American War of Independence. And... I'm surprised way back then I was still doing a good job. <laughs> I used an interesting black lining technique. Oh wait, I'm using that here. And I dipped them. Dipped them! And you're going to say, Hey, Mr. Everything's been dipping since the early 80s. Actually not. When did I start dipping? I started dipping in the 90s, actually. Uh, yeah, early 90s. That's when I started dipping. And I don't mean tobacco. <laughs> I'm talking about polyurethane stains. Because I've been playing with plastic models for a long time, and soft plastic models like Italri or Airfix, they don't hold paint very well. So you come up with these interesting ways to protect your paint jobs. One of them, most important, is to use Krylon as your primer because it affixes to plastic like nobody's business. Like nobody's business. And then the second, final thing was dipping. Because the dipping process sealed the model and uh, keeps the paint from flaking off. But uh, it's also great for hard plastics and metals and everything else. It pretty much became our go-to washing technique. I say ours, and I really mean like my gaming group. Not like just me. Because I used to own a game store and back in the day. I guess it would have been the late 90s because I got out in 95. That's when I opened my store. And shortly thereafter, maybe 96, 97, 98, that's when I started dipping. to say, damn, Mr. Everything, you're old. Yep. Maybe that's why I like World War II better than 40K. Because I have a brain. No, I mean, I'm more mature. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's what I will say. We'll say I'm more mature. Two left. Here we go. Trying to knock these out. Wow, I really overestimated how much pain I need. Oh, I think I realized what happened. It didn't mix up well, so I had to double it up. That's right. The amount of water is the wrong mixture.
And if you're saying, hey, Mr. Everything, why are you painting their ammo pouches camouflage color and not leaving them black? Well, because I plan to do the whole thing in camouflage and then go back and paint everything black that's supposed to be black, black. That way the camouflage patterns match, you know, they, they flow properly over the garment and not stop at pouches and stuff like that. Back straps and all that. Because there's like, on most of these figures, there's like a Y back LBE strap. I'm painting right over that. I'm going to camouflage right over that. And then once we go to one of the final steps is to paint those lines. I'm putting out a lot of good advice tonight. Um, if, you, if you didn't see the whole video, I recommend going back and maybe watching it at double the speed or something, or maybe even faster, and just watch and listen to all the advice. And this is like my fifth, vi fifth video, right? It's our sixth video or something like that, uh, where... We're working on these grenadiers. And each video is about two and a half hours. Because I notice right about three o'clock I start getting all burnt out. <laughs> and today I had to go to work super early, so really I haven't had any sleep from last night. I'm like doing this without any sleep. Screw you guys. No, I'm kidding. I'm just playing. I'm trying to act like I don't have any sleep. You know, you know how some people they get real grumpy when they don't have any sleep. It's not me. I don't get grumpy. I get even. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. This means one more poncho. I didn't do his legs, did I? Nope. Okay, I'm going to pull him out a little bit. Okay, so I forgot to do his legs. I do that. I forget everybody's gaiters. Once I get this guy done, I'm going to go over every model uh, with an eyeball, making sure that everything that's supposed to be khaki is, which would be helmets, ponchos, and gaiters. And then we'll do the rifles. And then we'll do... Dipping.
Oh, you know what? I didn't even check my... Because usually when I turn... Dang, I didn't even think about that. Usually when I turn off the uh, live stream and I have to turn it back on, the camera resets to a autofocus. If it's autofocusing, okay, no big deal. But I try to turn that off because it changes focus in the middle of looking at something. You know, it goes, and we don't want that. But it doesn't look like it's doing that, so. Maybe it saved my settings this time. <laughs> I doubt it. it. Hasn't done it in the past. Okay, so I got some tricky painting here. Okay, okay. And okay. I okay. Okay, poncho's done. Time to do the gators on two models. Well, my stomach stopped growling at me, so maybe it gave up. <laughs> no, I'm not eating anything just yet. Okay, so that's gatored. Gator done. Okay, now we got uh, last gator. Then a quick inspection. And then rifle wood. Turning my brush, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that before. That's why you do inspections. Okay. I'm gonna clean my brush. Then I'm gonna do a a once over inspection over all these guys to make sure that the khaki is on where it needs to be. Okay. Gators, helmets, bags, or ponchos. Okay, good deal. Bump, bump, bump. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Done. Yes, yes, yes. I'm saying the three yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That was easy. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay, yeah, he had four spots, which he shouldn't have. That was a model-making error. Yep, yeah, well, hmm, I'm going to fix this. It's a little bit too much black underneath. With him running, that part of his poncho is visible, so... There we go. So we go, yes, yes, yes. Oh, this guy right here, he needs um, a little bit of this, and we'll do that in a minute. Okay. 
Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. This guy. Yes, yes, yes. So far, so good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. One, two. Nope. See, missed something on this guy. Glad I did. Glad I did some research. Uh, some. What do you call it? Review. He had a poncho wrapped around his gas mask case. And all the ponchos are going to be camouflaged. So that's, uh, he's good now. Just needs to be fixed, that's all. Just didn't look right. All that, that didn't, just, just didn't look right. Okay. Oh, really? I skipped his whole helmet? Dang. back and double checking these maybe it's because I'm tired I'm not grumpy I'm just missing things or maybe I'm just an idiot you know it could be that just being seal okay yep he's good Good, 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 good. Yep, yeah, he's good. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Yep. Machine gunner, what has he got special about him? Mm, he's good. Right. Yep. Yeah. Assistant gunner. Work our way back. Work our way back down the line here. Good, 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 good. How about this guy, he is also good, 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 good. Yep. What about this guy? Good, 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 good. Or as they say, he's good. He's good. He's good as well. Nice, 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 nice. Play nice. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Good, 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 good. Yep, all that's good. Okay, and good, good, good. Okay. Good, 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 good. All good. Laster, but not Leaster. Definitely good. Okay. Clean my brush. I'm going to fix that one dude that's got the little Tamaya, um, he got the field gray missing off his leg. I think it's the guy with the grenade. It is. I mean... Looking at it, you can see, like, right. Maybe you can't see that in that light. You probably can't see it. But there is a spot on his trousers that is huge, and it's black. It's not black anymore. Boom, fixed. Okay, that took two seconds. All right, so now, rifle wood, and then get me. I'm talking myself through all this. But before I do any of that, I'm going to get me some crackers or something. If 
If you're out there and you've got any questions for me, feel free to ask. Um, I look at the chat in between colors, and that's where we're at right now. We're moving on to flat earth for the rifles. I read somewhere that the slings should also be black. But then I read somewhere else that said, based on supplies, uh, they could be brown, like they weren't never dyed. Oh yeah, it's also entrenching tools. This is not just the rifle wood, it's also entrenching tool. Wood, it's anything wood. And one reason why I might want to change it to white or black, probably white or maybe a linen color or something for the sling, because I want it to stand out. I want it to contrast. I want the model, you know, the contrasting colors make the model stand out and makes it look better. But when it's brown and it kind of blends in with all the other stuff on the model, it's not, uh, I mean, it's probably historically accurate, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't contrast. If, if linen or a light tan is an option, you should take it. So that... So that it contrasts. Okay, now this is an actual car 98, so. Good.
Now, most of these German heads have chin straps. Um, I didn't paint those. I just painted them flesh, just like I normally would paint a head, because when I do the dip, it's going to bring that out. It's going to they're going to look like chin straps. Okay. Second squad. I've already done him. Okay. Done him and him. Not done this guy. I'm doing the AR, the, the uh, STG44, I'm doing its buttstock because that's wood. I'm doing its pistol grip. That's wood. Can you believe it? There was a guy on YouTube that commented on one of my videos uh, correcting a fellow, uh, uh, what do you call him, uh, viewer. The viewer on my video said, that's not a pistol grip, it's a rifle grip. And I'm like, because it's not a pistol, it's a rifle. And I'm like, dude, are you an idiot? <laughs> it's still called a pistol grip. But he was he was bashing one of my other viewers because he called it a pistol grip. I'm like, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. It is a pistol grip. If it sticks down from the barrel or from the from the uh, receiver, then it is a pistol grip. Like a Car 98, of course, it doesn't have a pistol grip. But like an M16 has a pistol grip. A STG44 has a pistol grip. Ooh, we gotta get in here delicately. Done. Does he have a... nope. I'm looking for either a knife or a entrenching tool. Some of these guys, like the one I got in my hand, pretty much has nothing. Not a... Zilch. Okay, I think I've already done this machine gunner. I did. And he's good. Okay. Ready for dipping. This guy, he has nothing that would be wood. Okay. Start with this dude. 
this dudeo here, he's already done. This guy looks like he is already done. He is. This guy looks like he is already done. And this guy looks like he needs to be worked on. Okay. My guess is the guy was a young kid because it was on one of my Airsoft videos. Speaking of idiots. Okay, I was in the I've been in the service, right? I was in the service twice. I was in for four years, I got out as a sergeant, and then spent some time in Nashville and then went back in as a private and then had to work my way back up the ranks and all that but I went through basic training twice I went through AIT twice <laughs> I know right I would, I'm glutton for punishment yeah but I, I did this went back in the service spent some time Blossing boots, wearing uniforms, all that good stuff. Hell, I was an NCO. I inspected other people's uniforms. You know what I mean? Okay. So then, when I'm doing all these airsoft videos, I decide, you know, I'm going to do an airsoft video about how to blouse boots. Because I see guys on the airsoft field all looking like rag bags, right? Hoping that somebody sees this video, takes it in takes it in to heart and starts blousing their boots correctly, right? So I say, "Hey, this is how you do it. It's super easy. It only takes a second. And this is why you do it this way because of reasons, right? And then so basically just being very helpful and showing them exactly how it's done and everything. And this idiot gets on to my channel and he says, well, I don't know, there's probably actually multiple idiots. They got on the channel and they say, that's not how you blouse boots. What? You don't know. This is, That's not how they do it in the army. Dude. <laughs> because I'm an older person at this time, and also at the time of the of that video, it was probably about five years ago. They just assume that I'm just another airsoft guy that doesn't know what he's talking about. Which there are a lot of them that don't, because they never serve time or whatever. And that's fine. But don't assume that I don't know what I'm talking about. Or don't assume if you'd ever served. If you've never served, um, don't assume that you know the correct answer uh, when someone that has served is telling you what the correct answer is. Now, one guy got on there and said, I'm currently in the Army. Okay, that's fine. And that's not how we do it. And I'm thinking to myself, yes it is. What rank are you? He's a private. I'm a, I'm a PFC. And I'm like, you need to talk to your NCO and get him to show you how to properly blouse your boots. Because if you think the way I'm showing you is not the right way, then you don't know the right way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, oh, and another thing. Oh, okay, let's back this up a little bit. I served in combat arms. I was an infantryman. 
I was airborne. I was a pathfinder. That was my career path, if you want to call it that, my MOS. The guy that says, oh, that's not how you blast your boots. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a clerk. I work in an office. Uh, right. That might be the way your NCO wants you to do it in the office. But if you get out in the woods and actually do army stuff, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I had a little hate for clerks. Not hate, I wouldn't say hate. It's just that a clerk in the army screwed me over and got me, yeah, screwed me over. Like $5,000 worth of screw over. But that's all right now. I'm not in anymore. I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> Did I not paint this? Oh, man, I didn't even paint this sling. All right, well, he's got a black one. <laughs> or after I dip and I go back and I do all my highlighting, I can always just repaint the sling. Oh, that's right. I didn't paint this sling because this is one of those models that my plan was to paint everything except for one model and then paint that one model on screen. Yeah, so I had not, I basically skipped this sling thinking we were going to paint it on camera. Okay. All the rifles, all the yeah, all the all the entrenching tools are done. So we're going to dip. But before I do that, before I dip, I want to make sure I get those Okay, so what I'm doing now is <clears throat> trying to find some pictures Okay, hmm It's green, it's green It's green, it's not field gray, it's green It's not dark green either, it's like a light green. Okay. Hmm. I went to my Vallejo paints and I grabbed this guy. 
this is uh, German field gray. It's a totally field growl, right? I don't know what German TKCR is. You know, I'm going to find out what that is. And that first thing that comes up is Vallejo paint. Tank crew. Tank crew field gray. See, you notice how it's like a totally different green as opposed to regular field gray. Okay, so what I'm going to paint with this is the... Uh, Yeah, one drop should be enough. Just the three barrel bags, that's all I'm painting. That thing. I wonder if it's going to dry like super dark. It probably is. I don't know. It really stands out. Good contrast. I like it. And the reason why I'm not too worried about this is because I'm going to dip it. <laughs> you probably heard me say that probably a hundred times. I'm going to dip it. Dip, 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 dip. And once I dip it, it's going to darken everything. Everything is going to get dark. So if you think that guy looks... You think ooh, this guy looks super bright? He is. <laughs> but he's getting ready to get dipped. And he's going to get dipped here in probably less than five minutes. So. Tank crew, huh? I thought tank crews wore black. But I think I read somewhere that after a certain year, they stopped wearing black. Only the SS retained the black uniforms. Or something. Some, I read that somewhere. I don't remember. Now, there are a lot of things that are not painted yet. I don't plan to paint them until after the dip. Mainly, any, any like, metallic, like the barrels of the rifles and stuff, those are all going to be metallic. I'm going to do that after the dip. The uh, camouflage, the two camouflage colors, after the dip. The brass, after the dip. You know, the exposed brass for the belts of ammo or whatever from the machine guns. And straps. That's all after the dip. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to let this dry probably five to ten minutes, and then we're going to dip. So, while I'm waiting for this to dry. I'm going to get all my supplies ready uh, for dipping. So, um, what I'm probably going to do is move the camera back a little bit and put all these paints away or at least put them off to the side. So, give me five minutes and I'll be right back.
clean it up. I'm getting ready for the dip action. Okay, there's my dip brush. Don't need those. Okay. What did I drop? Ah, my tool. I never used this word, did I? Huh. Clean it up, I'm cleaning up. I'm ready. Did it dry? I don't know. I don't think it's dry yet, but so we're not gonna actually dip until it's completely dry. The only thing that I'm worried about is those these guys because that looks still wet. Um, I can start dipping by the time I get to there those will probably be dry that's what I'm thinking okay I'm looking for my other tool which is or should be Okay, I got my little can opener. I got my poly shade, uh, which is I'm using the pecan. I'm using the pecan poly shade, and I'm using a brush that is pretty much seen better days. So here we go. We're gonna adjust your viewing. go now let me see if I can't It's like the tightest zoom I've got right there. If I autofocus, will it do better? 
Looks kind of fuzzy to me. It doesn't look fuzzy to you. It looks fuzzy to me. That's why I need a better camera. Yeah, I guess that's the best you're going to get. Sorry about that. Alright, so this is how we dip. And you'll be you'll be amazed. But um, I need this space for the miniatures. So I'm going to slide these miniatures back a little bit. Off the uh, off the board. These guys are looking good already. I mean, you know, they still have a little. They still have a little ways to go, but they look pretty good. I don't know. I'm. I've fallen in love with Warlord Games miniatures. I don't know what it is. I'm a, I'm a fanboy, I guess. Okay. The reason why I'm doing that. The reason why I'm doing that is so I could slide this up. And this won't be in the way. Okay, here we go. You gotta shake it up because the color will settle, and then you'll have poly clear polyurethane at the top, and then you'll have like a really super deep pecan at the bottom. Well, if you mix it up, shake it up a lot, you'll get a complete pecan throughout the entire thing. And that's about all you need to shake it up. Um, I've got a cup over there with my acetone for cleaning the brush when we're done. I don't need to do it right now. Don't need to clean the brush until it's, until it's messed up. <clears throat> I don't know why there's putty and white paint all over this. This is my wife's tool. She's been using it to paint the house. Okay. Take this lid, try not to spill it on anything, because it's definitely sticky. Nice. Now there is a technique that some people have done, and that's they hold the base and they go dunk, and then it's considered dipped, right? Well, <laughs> that's excessive. Okay, so what I do is I hold the base this way, get my brush all juicy, and then I just... Oh, what did I just do? Look at that. What, what's going on with this dude? I just put stuff all over him. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> you give him 100%, what did I say? 100% coverage of juice. You juice him. You goop him, or whatever you want to call it. You don't want air bubbles like I just had. So you put a little more, and what, ha what happens, it helps it run. You want it to run. You want it to be runny. See how I kind of got them all goopy, and it's all over everything. His helmet and his uniform and everything. And look at, the, look at the map, how it's got that brown all over it, and his face has got brown all exactly. So we put him there. Second squad. Cover him completely. Make sure it's got brown. Now there's different shades that you can get. This one's pecan, right? Uh, you can go darker, you can go lighter. Just don't go with really super dark like the mahogany or the well, mahogany maybe. But don't go with, definitely don't go with black. Because black will ruin your model. It'll turn him completely black. And you don't want that. <laughs> oh 
Okay. If you see it starting to puddle up or pool up, it's okay, but you kind of don't want it to be too much. So use the brush to kind of force it to drip down a little bit more. And if you see that it's filling up a certain area, like what I just did was I blew a hole through it. So like where his arm is, I don't know if you can see through that arm right there. Now it was it was filling that area up, so I blew it so it would go through it. I blew it so it would go through it. Because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to fill up all the gaps. I just want it, I just want complete coverage. I want it all. Um, yeah. Now I'm putting it on everything because of the protection, the protective polyurethane. I want it, even the entrenching tool, the pants, the boots, the the haversack or whatever you call it, the, the bread bag. Uh, specifically, importantly, his flesh, because this counts as your flesh wash as well as your uniform wash as well as every other wash it does have a little bit of an odor to it but so what it smells good it smells like polyurethane it smells like oil based paint now if you notice uh, after you start doing a bunch of models I don't know if you do like tons and tons of models but if you, like I'm doing, I'm doing 30. That's, I consider that to be tons. If you're doing tons of models, by the time you get to the 30th model, or maybe not even that, maybe the 20th model, you'll notice that the pecan is going to start to settle. Okay. I did that on purpose, actually, this part right here. You see where that is puddling between the sling and the hand and the magazine? It's not... It's It'll dry like that, and then you'll have... You'll have a you'll have a scene there. So I take it and I blow it. Basically, I blow a hole through it. So now you don't have that scene going on anymore. Oh wow, it's pretty dark in the back. I need to fix it. Yeah, you want it to be completely covered, but you want don't want it to be so much that it just overwhelms your model. Okay, what was I saying? When you get to about your 20th model or so, the stain that is inside your polyurethane has a tendency to uh, thin out, and so you start getting a clear polyurethane at the top. Uh, it settles down to the bottom of the can. So you might have you might have to close it up and shake it a little bit again just to get the tint mixed again. Uh, maybe. Just depends on how fast you are and how good you mixed it up. Okay, that one's not coming apart, so let's that's got too much inside that one sling. Ah, there we go. Okay, something you want to notice. Well, you really won't you really won't see all the color changes until it dries. But you notice I just covered that yellow, and you can kind of automatic. You can already see that it's a different color or yellow. Right, so uh, how it stains it down to a gives it a brown look. Okay, so what is this? What is this doing for me as a as an artist? Well, it gives me a complete coverage and protects my paint job, right? But it also I'm sorry, I just had a just had a pain shoot through my mouth. I'm a toothache almost. Um, 
but it also makes the model look dirty. which means he's been out in the woods. He's been out in combat. He's been fighting. You want that. Also, it hides any mistakes. So if you made a little mistake, the brown will... Okay, if, if you're... The only place you're usually going to make mistakes is when two different things on the model touch. Like when the helmet touches the head, right? I'm just going to use that as an example. When the helmet touches the head, there's going to be, um, usually there's going to be like a seam or a ridge or a bump or something, right? And so when you uh, paint that, your paint might go onto a part of the model that it's not supposed to. So, like, let's say you're painting flesh. That flesh might actually go onto the helmet, right? And then you might not correct it, or vice versa. I'm just using that as an example, okay? And then when you go and you dip it, the polyurethane stain will pull up or gather at all of the creases, at all of the places where two things stick together, like helmets and heads, hands and rifles, shirts and pants, or whatever. And uh, because it's pooling up there, it kind of puts like a... It disguises... The fact that you your paint went over where it shouldn't. So it's kind of like magic. <laughs> it's a stain. It's a wash. It fixes all your mistakes. It really doesn't fix them. I guess it covers them up. Wow, I just had the second pain. I'm going to have to take some medicine. Painkiller. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm just going to avoid the assistant gunner. Okay, I'm, I might be really excessively putting this on these guys. Yeah, that's probably just a little bit too much. So I, I use the brush to kind of soak, you know, to soak up extra, and then I put it back in the tin. Um, that looks good. And it looks worse now than when it does when it dries. When it dries, it's going to look really good. Right now, it just looks kind of like a disaster. <laughs> right, it looks like it's just completely covered in mud or something. And there was a time that I dropped a model into the can. And I had to fish it out. <laughs> and it still looked good when it was done. Because that was, that was what you would call a true dip. <laughs> he got dunked, actually. He wasn't dipped, he was dunked. I'm making sure that any holes aren't completely filled in. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to push these three guys off to the side. I'm going to hold off and do them last. See, I've only done 12 models, so we're still going. Still going. And if there's any detail on the model, like, like if you paint over any details, like I painted over the straps, right? The, uh, the bandoliers and stuff like that. Um, that's all field gray. But now that I've put the dip on there, 
if there was any details on the model, raised area or whatever, it's going to puddle up a little bit of brown right along those cracks, right along those lines. So what happens is it enhances or accentuates where those straps are located. And it makes it look like you meant to do it that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... Dipping's just... Um, it's mandatory. you got to do it. If you're not dipping, you need to be dipping. If you've never dipped before and you're afraid to dip... I get that. Um, I was I was kind of worried, like if I was going to ruin my models the first time I dipped. So, what? And, and and it also takes a couple of times of dipping to get the right amount of dip on a model before you start to overcoat it. You know. So what I say is grab a D and D miniature that you've got and dip it. See what it looks like when you're done. And then experiment with some models that are easily fixable or replaceable. You know, if you've got a bunch of these two cent D and D miniatures from from the '80s or whatever, paint them up, base coat them. I mean, don't even really give them a full paint job. Just base coat them, like what I did with these bolt action guys, and then dip them, and just see how it changes their appearance. You will be amazed. It makes uh, it makes amateur paint jobs look professional. I'm gonna tell you man. Oh, that might have been a little bit excessive. Okay. Be careful. When you dip, it doesn't all stay on the model. It will drip down to the base. And it will get all over your base. If your base is smallish or doesn't have a lip or there's nothing to absorb the uh, the juice of goodness it will overflow your base I've done it it's gone on that's why I put the wax paper down because there's been times that it would go it would actually be so thick that it would drip all the way down and get all over the wax paper so Make sure you use some kind of wax paper uh, so even if it does drip over, it doesn't stick and you can pick your models up. Yeah, we haven't even talked about flocking. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to I, I don't like to do 100% flock. I used to. When I was playing Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k, I would take 100% of the base and cover it with flock. Um, I don't do that anymore. I do about two-thirds flock. The grit that you put down, I dry brush it, and when you only do about two-thirds flock, the other part of your base that that's not uh, flocked shines through, and you see uh, the grit and everything that you worked on, that you put on the base.
so it's more of a combination of the two but mostly flock because that really makes your model look the best but you also like to have that contrast with the grit and everything yeah the grit really makes a difference on your model and it saves flock because you're only using about two-thirds of your flock instead of 100 percent that guy's completely covered excessively that's good i like it <laughs> it's like he's, he's way covered If you have any comments or questions about dipping, yeah, put them in the comments. I, I read my comments periodically. <laughs> I don't do it every day. <laughs> but I do do it from time to time. Yeah, make sure you got a good grip on your model. You don't want to drop it into your dip. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It doesn't hurt the model. But you don't want them to you don't want it to sit in there and soak. You know, you want to fish them out and then you know, get the excess off. But then you're going to have dip on the bottom of your base and it's just a nightmare. That lid's in the way. <laughs> I'm moving it. I'm also dipping before I do any eyes <clears throat> because I'm going to do eyes with a white, right? I know you're like, it's real easy to mess up eyes, but I've got a technique that's flawless. And I probably should do a video about it. I, I was talking about it earlier tonight that I, doing eyes is so important on a large model like a 28 millimeter, uh, 15 millimeter not that big of a deal 20 millimeter it's maybe maybe not but 28 definitely you should do eyes uh and i've got a way to do eyes that is i mean you'd be amazed it's kind of a three-step process i mean i can kind of give you an overview right now while i'm doing this you put a big white dot and you're like Mr. Everything, that's crazy. Why do you put a big white dot? It'll make them look like anime characters. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It's just a big white dot. That's the eye. That's the eyeball. And then put a black dot in the middle, right? And you're like, man, that'll make them look goofy. And it does. But I'm not done. Once you get the big white dot and it dries, and then you put the black dot in the middle, and it dries. Then you take flesh. And you draw a line across the top of the eyeball and across the bottom of the eyeball. And what happens is it turns into like a little eye slit, which is what most people have. And the white is really cool and the black is really cool and then the flesh covers 
the eye basically where the eyelids are at and so it's really cool yeah it's it's super cool and fast and your eyes actually look really good actually any eyes will really improve the look of your model believe it or not believe it or not I'm floating on air and I can't sing all right say Mr. Everything be quiet Stop singing. You're horrible at it. I know. And if I sing too much, they'll probably bill me or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're down to just a fire team. And the uh, pigment in the dip is holding out strong. So good. I must have shook it up long enough. It's not... Uh, going to what do they call it? S not sedating. It's not. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. It's like it soaks down into the bottom and leaves the clear stuff at top. It's not really doing that right now. That's good. Yeah, I can't wait to get my American paratroopers in. Those guys will be easy to paint. I mean, Germans have so many different colors. So many, and they have camouflage and all this other bullshit. <laughs> Americans don't have to worry about it. Be one color over the whole model. I could just, I could actually just spray paint them that color and then go back in and highlight them. Actually, I don't even have to highlight them. I could spray paint them one color, then dip them, and they'll be done. <laughs> it's not that. It's not that easy, but yeah, but it's pretty much like that. <laughs> Excuse me. That actually hurt my tooth. The one I said I need to take a painkiller for. I thought I could get through all these dips without it hurting. It's hurting. I'm my me 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 Okay. You know what? I'm gonna take a painkiller right this a minute. before it gets worse. And a little bit of coffee. Okay. Now, there's uh, a lot of painting guides out there that will say, do this, do that, do this, do that. And when they get to the, the washing part, they'll say, use, you know, like a brown wash or use a sepia tone or something to uh, wash your models. They don't mention anything about dipping it, right? Uh, if you do that, you're basically double dipping. If you do a wash and a dip, then you're hurting yourself. Now, you can use just a plain clear polyurethane without the stain in it. So then you can wash, let that dry, and then stain it with a clear. You absolutely can do that. But I do it with the stain because it basically washes and protects in all in one step.
Next thing I do want to have to uh, mention is that this is a satin. It will dry semi-glossy. So, to fix that, get some of your testers dull coat and just spray it once everything's dry. Get rid of the get rid of that shine. Yeah, tomorrow that's going to be the first thing I do when I wake up. I'm just going to grab these models and I'm going to spray it with dull coat. And then I'll go to painting the highlights. Anything that I might have missed or highlights. Now some people will take the color you painted it by or with they will add like a drop of, of white and mix it to make it a much lighter color. And okay, now hopefully these are dry. And then uh, and then use the same color with just a drop of white mixed in as the highlight. That works great. That works. There's no problem with that. Sometimes you want to use the color wheel and certain colors are highlighted by certain other colors that are not the same, like green and yellow. Yellow is a really good highlight for green. But I'm not going to do that. I've already figured out what my highlights are going to be. Also, if you use a wash, like a dip, it darkens the color. So you can actually highlight, this is what I plan to do, you can actually highlight with the same color you painted it with. Because overall, you should have been painting with a lighter color than what you originally wanted it to be. Be knowing that you are going to dip it, it will darken your shade. You knew that. I know that. So because it's now going to be darker, if I go back, I can highlight with my original color. You see what I'm saying? You follow along? Perfect. All right, last dude. I also pay particular attention to the faces when I'm dipping because uh, it's if it's going to be my flesh wash as well as my uniform wash then I need to make sure that the flesh actually get a good amount not so much that it pulls up and hides the face but enough that it gets down into the cheekbones and the nose and the eye sockets and stuff so that it, so you get a good flesh wash okay all of them are done. Now you can, from right there, you can see the difference in color that these are showing. Compared to what they were painted as. Would you agree with that? All right, so let's let's. Uh, well, I'm just gonna clean my brush, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, thank you for coming out and checking out this video. We'll start off by uh, showing you what these look like after I after they dry, and I spray them down with a dull coat. Um, I'm going to get you up close. I'm going to get you up nice and close so you can kind of see what these models look like before the end of the, before the, end of the videos. Okay, let me move my hand. Let me move my knee. That's 
not low enough, is it? Not really to get a good view of what's going on. if I can adjust the focus on this. Yeah, that's a, that's the focus right there. What do you think? I mean, they're not done yet, obviously. I mean, he's coated in brown, but we're still waiting for that to dry. All right, so I'll see you next time.